Good evening boys and girls and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Lee aka Rolling Thunder and in today's video we're going to be having a in-depth discussion about my Ducati Panigale V2 video. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a cup of tea and let us get into the video. So you're probably wondering, why am I doing a video now? When I've already done the actual first ride review. Well, let's be honest. The weather conditions were absolutely fucking atrocious when I actually took the bike out. I hadn't been on this for the best part of three, four months. So I didn't really have a benchmark to go by. My bike. My bike are bike. <laughs> My bike are bike. Yeah? I do. <laughs> uh, it's nice when people take interest in you, in it? But anyway, when I took the V2 out initially, back in March or whenever the fuck it was, I didn't really have a chance to actually analyse it in depth. Mainly because, one, I only had it for an hour. Two, I hadn't been on a bike for three months, so I was completely and utterly retarded when it came to giving my thoughts and feedback on everything that I was feeling and so on so what I decided to do is well I can still remember what the bike was like I figured I might as well recap on that video and go into a bit more detail about it because yeah okay the video was all right but um, thanks to the shitty weather conditions and stuff like that I couldn't actually you know articulate what I was trying to say so that's what I'm doing now Oh, pardon me. Obviously, the, the V2 was new for this year. I've heard so many good things about it. So when I got the opportunity to ride one, I thought, yeah, fuck it, I'm having a go. In regards to what the bike felt like in, compar in, comparison, to, in comparison to this, it felt a lot lighter. I think in comparison to the 1098, I think the V2 is about maybe 20, 30 kilos lighter, I guess. But yeah, the, the V2, it was an absolutely amazing bike to ride. I would have loved to have been able to have ridden the V4 as well, just to see what it's like. So, if anyone who watches my videos lives in the south of England and wants to let me have a go on their V4, please feel free to get in touch. In actual fact, I was actually told, when I actually did the, uh, the actual review at P&H, they actually said to me, that um, because the, v, the, the V4 is so rare, because when they get them in, they instantly sell, um, that they couldn't get hold of one. And I was told that if I wanted to order the V2, if I placed an order there and then, I wouldn't get it till the end of May, beginning of June. And so you know when you think to yourself, yeah, I'd love to, but no thanks. That's pretty much where I was at. I wanted to say, yeah, do you know what, fuck it, I want one. But I just, I just don't have the money right now. So this is what I was alluding to in a previous, in a, one of my previous videos about, you know, will there be a second bike coming to the stable, yada, yada, yada. The way the weight's distributed is a lot different compared to the 1098 in the fact that because it's a, it's a, a, it's a well, it's the same uh, capacity uh, V-twin engine, but I would have to say, that the actual power delivery is a hell of a lot different. And the thing that threw me off the most about the V2 was the fact that it has um, fly-by-wire throttle. So not like the old school stuff of two cables and a spring, which in normal circumstances wouldn't be a problem. But because I'd never ridden a bike like that, it felt so fucking alien to me. It really did. But it was something that you, you'll see in the video that I managed to ride around, so it wasn't like it was the end of the world, do you know what I mean? If I remember rightly, the V2 has exactly the same horsepower as this. So around 160-ish bhp, 155-160. And in comparison to this, the, the, the actual power delivery is so much more sophisticated. The road manners of the V2 is nothing like this. Absolutely nothing like it whatsoever. You know, 
I know you know you'll hear people say the phrase chalk and cheese and night and day and blah 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 and people think oh do you know what you're just saying that just to make yourself sound clever or whatever but it's the truth it really fucking is the V2 compared to this it was like the best way I could describe it right the 1098 is like trying to crack an egg with a sledgehammer the V2 is like trying to crack an egg with a spoon you know it's designed for that particular purpose and I have to admit had I not got or gone through the two 848s and the 1098 that I've got now I'd probably say I would probably get the V2 without any shadow of a doubt but that's only because insurance wise it would absolutely kill me you know, I'd love to be able to say I've got a V4 and yada 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 but right now my financial situation will not allow it so I'm, for, I'm afraid until such time a V4 will not be on the cards but the V2 what a fucking machine I know I raved about this being you know biblically quick and fast and all the rest of it but even in the rain I kid you not the V2 it was planted, it was stable, it was well composed. You couldn't, I couldn't ask for a better experience. And yeah, like I said, the video, in the video, and also, like I'm saying now, the actual road conditions were absolutely fucking abysmal. The V2 did so fucking well, I was absolutely gobsmacked about how well it handled. It dealt with the bumps in the road really well, it dealt with the rain, it dealt with the cold. I mean, it dealt, better with, it, it dealt with it better than I did because I I was so cold and wet after that test ride it was unbelievable you know my clothes were wet even down to my fucking socks and underwear were soaked but you know what I don't care because I enjoyed the fucking experience and that's the main thing if you can get off a bike regardless of what the weather's doing with a smile on your face then it was fucking worth it the getting wet, the getting cold whatever all that shit was worth it if you can turn around and say, after a test ride or after a ride out with someone or whatever, if you can turn around and say that I had a fucking amazing time, yeah, okay, I'm cold, I'm wet and whatever else, but do you know what? I fucking enjoyed myself. If you can say that, then anything that happens before, after or during was fucking worth it. And the V2 was exactly that. It was a fucking worthwhile experience. And if I could do it all over again, which fingers crossed I'm going to, if P&H are kind enough to let me borrow their V2 again, that's exactly what's going to happen. And with that, I'm hoping to, you know, exploit it a little bit more. And if I can, you guys are going to be along for the ride to uh, experience it as well. You know, the V2 is one of those bikes that um, you need to learn, I think because there's so many bells and whistles looking at the handlebars of the V2 it was like looking at a fucking PlayStation controller I've never seen so many different bells and whistles and buttons and switches on a set of handlebars like I was seeing on the V2 but you know what it's one of those things you know as time's gone on technology's improved it's one of them things that uh, you know it's like uh, what uh, one of my colleagues said at work today you have to adapt to survive and that is something that Ducati have done fucking amazingly well you know I know I say I would love to ride the V4 or own a V4 if I don't then it's not the end of the world but I'd like to be able to say I've ridden one so if anyone out there has a V4 that he want to let me ride then get in touch I will I will ride it don't you worry about that any given opportunity to ride the super bike of that caliber I'm all over it I mean, it's not mean to say that I don't enjoy riding this, because I do. But sometimes, something with a little bit more sophistication, a little bit more, you know, prowess, a little more ambience. A ambience, I sound like a fucking snobby bastard when I say that. But something with a little bit more uniqueness. Because obviously, I look, at the, I look at my bike every day. I ride it near enough every day. But to be able to turn around and say, do you know what, I've ridden this, I've ridden that, I've ridden the other. 
it's just something that you know it's a bucket list that's deserving of ticking off do you know what i mean now i've ridden fireblades i've ridden big bang r1s i've ridden other ducatis like the diavo and stuff like that which by well, my ad was fucking weird but i'll go into that at a later date but like i said the v2 absolutely night and day in comparison to this if you can imagine a surgeon performing heart surgery right what's he going to use a scalpel what's he going to use precision instruments now put that into into bike context this bike if you're going to compare it to sharp objects this bike is about as sharp as I've had in a long time but the V2 was just a different fucking animal this it, the 1098 is fucking brutal you know it's power delivery it's torque it's grunt it, it, it's it is pretty much out of this world it really is well for me it is anyway and if I could you know hand on heart if I could put this engine in the V2 chassis, I think that would be an absolute brilliant combination. You know, the power and the torque of this, plus the looks of the V2, it's like a match made in heaven, it really is. But with the benefit of hindsight, the, the V2 does offer a lot more compared to this. But I do want to make something abundantly clear. I am not selling a 1098. The 1098 is not going anywhere. If money was no option, yeah, straight away, I would blatantly get the V4. But, you know, money doesn't grow on trees. And considering I've ridden the V2, I can give you guys a much more in-depth analysis of what I think is good, what I think is bad, what I think could be improved on. And obviously the guys in Bologna, they fucking know what they're doing, do you know what I mean? It's not like they just slapped a load of bike parts together and go, eh, that'll do. It's a Friday afternoon, let's go and have some pizza. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's nothing like that. But I kid you not, like I keep saying, even in the rain, the V2 handled beautifully. You know, big Showa BPF forks, I think they think it's got. It's got a Sax rear shock as well. You know, it's not obviously Olin's, but... It may not be Olin's. Oh, fuck me. But it certainly does the job. I'll get out my way, bruv. What's the matter with you? The point I'm trying to make is... Is that... The V2 was an absolute joy to ride. And given the opportunity... Yes, I would quite happily ride it again. The one thing that I said in the video which really got on my tits was that. But because the V2 has fly-by-wire throttle, it, um, it didn't really matter too much. I mean, yeah, I noticed it, but it, it didn't hurt. It didn't, it didn't hurt. It didn't make that much of a difference. Whereas a bike like this, if you've got a choppy throttle, you notice it, like you really do. And that's something that I've, I've tried to avoid and stuff like that. But unfortunately, it is what it is. With regards to the way the V2 was, absolutely delightful. And I think my only gripe with the V2, apart from that, was probably the fact that the fucking seat was so tiny. I kid you not. <laughs> if I'd have farted, my ass would have swallowed it. Whereas at least with this, with with the 1098, I've actually got something of a seat underneath me. And I do apologise that I'm shouting a lot, but I'm trying to prove a point, and I think my enthusiasm is getting the better of me. Oh, what a lovely evening. Ah, bright light. But on a side note, how is everyone actually doing? I hope everyone's well. I hope the COVID-19 isn't getting to you guys too much. I mean, I know it's been getting to me quite badly recently, but, you know, this is why we own bikes, is to get away from it, to chill out a little bit and, you know, get become one and relax and all that other shit that goes along with riding a bike. 
And that aside, I'm in a pretty good place. I can't argue too much with the way things are. Admittedly, there are going to be days where I really wish that the weather would be better or the, the weather would be cooler or whatever, but you can't, you can't have everything. As much as I like to be able to say, yeah, do you know what? I've got everything exactly how I want it. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. But what I can do is make the best of the situation. And that is enjoy the bike, enjoy the roads, and enjoy the less, lesser traffic of riding around of an evening rather than either first thing in the morning or last thing in the afternoon. As they always say, it is what it is. What a glorious, glorious evening. Hardly a cloud in the sky. It's nice and warm. Not too much traffic. I mean, I say that when there's a fucking Kia Rio in front of me, but you know, you can't win everything, I guess. Or can you? If you do that, you can. But yeah. I just thought, you know, considering I've got the time and I've got the memories, I figured I might as well share with you guys my in-depth analysis of the V2. Because like I said, I hadn't been on a bike for three months before that video was done. So I'd have to say that, um, okay, yeah, my riding is a little bit rusty, but I think I've kind of covered the majority of the bases when it comes to the V2 you know Pat, just to recap 155 160 bhp no idea how heavy it is I can't imagine it'd be very heavy probably about 160 170 kilos um, decent exhaust tone amazing brakes traction control was amazing throttle response was epic and everything in between was just it was just on point and I know I say that this bike's on point but The V2 was like fucking razor's edge. You know, it was so sharp, it was poised. And another good thing about the V2 in comparison to this, it had a 52% weight bias to the front, which if you guys have watched uh, the um, 44 Teeth video of the V2, uh, Alistair Fagan actually comments as saying that the, the front of the bike is a lot nosier. So it makes it better to turn into corners. I'll put a link in, I'll put a link to that video because hit that video actually is the one that gave me inspiration to go and ride the V2. So make sure you go and check that out. And as always guys, thanks for the support, thanks for the uh, the likes, comments and the subscribes. And as always, be good, be safe, look after yourselves on the road. And this is Lee aka Rolling Thunder saying adios.